Hello everyone. In response to popular request, I'm going to do today's video on obesity and weight gain. Now, I'm going to start this video with the truth. And the truth is, there is a reason that you have excess weight. We like to use excuses in our society, such as, I have a slow metabolism, I overeat, or it's about my genetics. But none of these conditions is what actually causes obesity and weight gain. Weight gain is an external reflection of a deep internal problem. The difficult truth which we must face when we're looking at weight loss is there is a reason that your body thinks that it needs the weight that it has. Otherwise, you wouldn't have it. So there's a reason that you think you need the excess weight. So the question you need to ask yourself is, why do I need this weight? What is the positive intention for having it? Sit for a while with this question and let the answer surface. You might be surprised what answer you receive. The only lasting way to release weight is to discover what need is underneath the reason that you have excess weight and to release that need so the need no longer exists. The only way to release excess weight is to discover and release the need that is causing that excess weight, the root that is causing all of it. If you release that need, the body will no longer put on weight because it has no use for it. In order to explain this, I'm going to explain an observation which I've made over the years helping people with obesity. Everyone I have ever met that is overweight or obese feels a deep internal need for emotional protection. They run away from and make excuses for their feelings. They live in a hold-in internal world of insecurity, and many of them have run away from those feelings for so long, they aren't even aware of them. The number two reason for being overweight is chronic self-denial. This comes in the form of denying the self of what one truly wants and who one truly is but more importantly, the form of depriving oneself of what one desires. Many people who are overweight do not feel that they deserve what they desire. Their form of self-punishment is deprival. They deny themselves of what they need and want based on principle or belief and feel such a sense of internal starvation and lack from that self-denial that their body responds by feeling as if it must save because it will be denied. And what does the body save and store when it feels as if it will be starved in the future? Fat. Here are some other causes for excess weight and obesity. Feelings of insecurity. Self-rejection. Wanting to protect the body from someone or something. Attempting to fill a void within. Feelings being stuffed down and not expressed. The feeling that you cannot express the truth of who you are. Seeking love and fulfillment, but being convinced that it will not come from the outside. Using food as a substitute for affection. Inability to admit to yourself or others what you truly desire. Feeling a lack in an aspect of your life so great that you are trying to overcompensate. Craving closeness and being loved slash held, but feeling as if you will not get it. So you have to simulate that feeling of closeness or being held tightly by fat. Putting up emotional armor so nothing gets in. Suppressed anger and resentment. And the desire for power and bigness so someone isn't taken advantage of. Look to release these underlying causes of weight gain and of obesity and your body will no longer need the weight. And everything else you do will just be icing on the cake. People get different results from eating food because people have a different vibrational set point relative to food and relative to their body. So I want to explain something that I'm seeing because I'm able to see the world in a vibrational manner. When you watch someone and they take a bit of food and they put it to their lips and their idea that they have in their head, their belief, is that that food is going to make them fatter than it will. They have a love-hate relationship with food. So they will gain weight no matter what they eat or don't eat. 
However, if you meet a person who puts the food to their mouth and they are in an aspect of appreciation, they don't think that the food is making them fat, it's not even a thought that's entering their head, this person could probably eat three pieces of chocolate cake and be no different in terms of physical appearance than they were in the first place. It is your idea, your belief relative to fatness that creates everything in this reality. If you believe the food will make you fat, then it will. If you do not believe the food will make you fat, then it won't. So you see how we're stuck in a vibrational holding pattern. So believe me when I tell you that metabolism has absolutely nothing to do with it. And the key to losing weight is to find out how to release resistance to the thoughts that are holding you a vibrational match to that weight. It is very important to understand that you cannot eat foods that you think will make you fat and get skinny. You also can't think thoughts relative to your body that you are fat and get skinny. That's a vibrational contradiction. Resist the weight and it will stay there. Focus on all the things that don't work, all the things you've tried. Focus on the fat you do have and you will get more of it. Resistance is the reason that most diet plans don't work well. You're not doing things from the standpoint of allowing and joy. Instead, you're fighting against the fat. You put yourself on diets that don't feel good to do. They're hard to do. You end up feeling as if you're depriving yourself, and so you're pointed in the opposite direction of joy, and you simply can't maintain that. It nullifies the whole entire prerogative of weight loss. The only reason you want to lose weight is because you think it will make you happier to lose weight. So if what you're doing to lose weight makes you less happy, you're pulled in the opposite direction of weight loss and happiness. We may think that we're going about it the right way, but we aren't. I promise you when it comes to weight loss that the harder you try to lose the weight, the worse everything will get. You will not be able to lose weight because that desperacy you feel, that desire, which is so intense within you that you feel the acute lack of it, is resistance. And anything we resist persists. The issue with weight gain is that you want something that you know you don't have. And the more you focus on how bad you want it, the more aware you are of your position relative to that thing you want, which is how much you lack what you want. So if you really, really want something that you are really, really aware you don't have, you activate the side of the equation that is more believable to you. In other words, you activate the side of the equation which is already activated, which is the lack of what you want. It is understandable you are standing in your life looking at the proof, which is the lack of what you want, in this case, excess weight. And so you feed that side of the equation. Losing weight is all about releasing resistance to the current weight which you have. It's about finding any way you can to fall in love with yourself. Now right now you can't look in the mirror and say, wow, I am absolutely gorgeous, I'm the perfect weight. That would be lying to yourself because you don't actually believe that. But you can choose to focus at yourself in terms of things you do believe which are on the way to total self-love of your body image. From there, you can incrementally take steps to go in the direction of the body image which you really identify with, the one you want to have. But this time, it'll come from a space of wanting to allow yourself to achieve a body image which you enjoy because you love yourself, not because you hate yourself. I'm going to reiterate that again. Real weight loss is weight loss which occurs because you love yourself and you want yourself to feel good. It does not come from the space of hating yourself and wanting yourself to be different. I'm going to reiterate it again, that the entire reality you live on is the byproduct of your thoughts. And so we've said many times that you cannot make up for an action what you lack in focus. However, when it comes to something like your body, you can use actions to help improve your mentality vibrationally. What this means is you can pick small actions every day which will cause you to vibrationally feel better relative to weight gain. And by doing that, you will increase your vibration, which will then lead you towards more inspired actions to take. And those actions which you take towards weight loss will then increase your vibration 
and your mental set point relative to weight loss, and so it will snowball in the correct direction, like so. There is a pain cycle that exists relative to food and relative to gaining weight. And it goes like this. You know, you believe that some food is going to make you fat. But in the moment, the need to feel that internal void filling up instead of existing there, the need to fill it up with something that makes you feel less empty inside, is more intense than your desire and your need to be skinny. So in the moment, you have competing needs. And so you put it in your mouth, and then you feel that sinking guilt. I understand this process, and you're not in this process alone. That's the one thing which most people who are overweight feel like. Because if you're overweight and resistance to it, you'll attract all kinds of skinny friends that can eat anything they want, and you'll be convinced you're the only one that feels this way. But I promise you, you aren't. There are many people on this planet that are stuck in the same cycle. And in reality, anybody who suffers from any kind of addiction is stuck in this cycle as well. So, we're all in this boat together. It's important to understand that when it comes to losing weight, you have to be motivated from the inside and not the outside. It's also important that you leave everyone else out of the equation. What that means is it doesn't matter what somebody did to lose weight or what diet they were on to lose weight. When it comes to losing weight, there's only you and you, and your experience has nothing to do with anyone else's experience. So all you need to do is examine your beliefs relative to how you think right now that you will lose or gain weight. And then going in the direction of that, leave everyone else out of it. Their experience has nothing to do with yours. So in terms of action, here's the problem. Most people trying to lose weight, they get on very difficult diet routines, very difficult exercise routines, as if we're not even training, we're just sending someone straight to Everest and expecting them to summit. This is not how it's going to work, because you're dealing with an awful lot of resistance. And if you have ever done a diet program or a difficult exercise program before, you know that there's nothing that creates more resistance than doing something which is currently beyond your means. You're going to feel like you're punishing yourself, you're going to feel like you're depriving yourself, and so you will actually be introducing more resistance. And so you can't stick with it. The human being goes in the direction of what feels good. So anything that is too difficult to do, you will not maintain, you will not stick with it. This is why people yo-yo in weight so much when they try new diet plans, when they say, I've tried everything. The reason it keeps going back is because they have tried to do things that are too difficult for where they currently are. So the way to go about weight loss is to take every day and set simple goals, one goal a day or two goals a day, that's it, anything that you can manage that seems achievable. Not something which is way out of sight, not something like Everest, something very small. So for some people, this might look like, today I'm going to eat an apple. Everything else in my life might stay the same. I might be eating the same foods throughout the day, I might not exercise all day long, but I am adding an apple to my diet. Now when they eat that apple, they have some kind of achievement, and that's going to feel good. And so, because they associate that action with feeling good, not bad or depriving themselves, then they will be motivated. So play this game with yourself. Each day I want you to set an achievable incremental goal. Today it might look like walking around the block. Next week it might look like walking around two blocks. If you keep doing these simple steps, setting these achievable goals, which keep you motivated to go in the direction of weight loss because it feels good to you in the process of it and in the achievement of it. And pretty soon, your next goal will be a half marathon. Pretty soon you will be standing in front of the mirror and you will be looking at the exact image you want the world to see. What is the key to weight loss when it comes to action? It is to do little, simple, achievable things that you believe will help you lose weight. Do not do things that feel like punishment or self-deprival. Simply do the things you feel motivated and excited to do. It doesn't matter what you do to lose weight. Simply take the steps that you believe will help you lose weight, such as eliminating all meat from your diet, eliminating dairy from your diet, adding vegetables to your diet, adding fruits to your diet, 
adding healthy fats to your diet, such as nuts and coconut oil, removing unhealthy fats from your diet, such as lard, Crisco, vegetable oil, or butter, taking the stairs instead of the elevator, spending time outdoors, doing a cleanse, or taking up a sport. When it comes to taking up a sport, it's incredibly important that you do something you enjoy to do. This is the bottom line when it comes to weight loss and exercise. If you don't enjoy exercise, you will not be exercising for very long, and it will feel like self-punishment every time you do it. So what I want you to do is I want you to find an activity you enjoy. Don't make it about the exercise. Have the exercise just be a happy side benefit of all of it. So maybe you might try tennis and you really love tennis. So the fact that you're exercising when you're doing tennis is just a bonus. That's the kind of thing you want to look for when it comes to exercise. Otherwise, you're going to be going at weight loss yet again and at exercise yet again from a standpoint of resistance instead of a standpoint of adding to your own joy. So I want to take a bit of time to tell you about the difference between your body and your mind. And I promise it's only going to take a second, because it goes like this. There is no difference between your body and your mind. Your body is a direct reflection of your mind. Your reality is a direct reflection of your beliefs. So if you can work around with your beliefs, alter the thoughts you're thinking, your body must follow suit. We need to stop approaching weight loss in the way that we approach it now. You cannot spend your life being driven to action by what you do not want. So the moral of the story is stop struggling against the weight you don't want. Think any thought you can think without lying to yourself that helps you to make peace with the weight you currently have. And then work to transform the root need for this weight. After that, you can move towards the body image you desire by doing things that pull you in that direction, that feel good to do, that you're excited to do, that you believe will work, so that when you do them, you feel the momentum of those actions. From there, everything's easy. You can let the actions make you feel better, and feeling better will inspire you towards better action, and so on and so forth, until one day, and you may not even realize it, your body will be the embodiment of your desire for it. Stop evaluating yourself according to the opinions and perspectives and ideals of others. Most of us do this, so I understand it's a bit of a tall order. But most of us spend our lives comparing ourselves to the perspectives of other people. Other people who have Photoshop. <laughs> As you can understand, that's incredibly self-hating. And you can't lose weight from an aspect of self-hate. You can't hate the fat and get rid of the fat because you're resisting it. And whatever you resist persists. It's my desire that you understand that the body that you're in is absolutely perfect. There's nothing about it which needs to change. But at the same time, you deserve to have whatever body image you desire to have in this life. And there is nothing preventing you from it.